Listen, I don't normally cover YouTube drama on my channel, but I do cover Godzilla. So I figured I would make this video and it wouldn't really feel too out of left field for people. On January 29th, 2024, a YouTube channel called Dr. Skipper uploaded a video titled Godzilla Doesn't Work in America. And he received a ton of backlash for it on Twitter. Being in the general circle of Kaiju Twitter, I figured I would watch it and have an open mind because I really wanted to figure out why everyone was so mad. And it pains me to say this, but this is a poorly made video with terrible pacing and little to no research actually being put in. So after setting up with some jokes, Dr. Skipper states in the video that Godzilla is public domain in America. Godzilla is so popular that a lot of people didn't even know that it originated in Japan or that it's in the public domain in the United States since Toho, the company that created Godzilla, never expected the freak lizard to get marvelized one day. But this free copyright for Godzilla is only in America. In Japan, our boy is still in shock. This is false. In fact, I'm not even sure where he got this information from and what his source is because he doesn't give a citation in the video. When looking at the official website for the US Copyright Office, it shows that Godzilla is still under copyright and has been since 1954. I went around looking for where Dr. Skipper might have gotten this information and it looks like he saw Wikipedia listed it as public domain. Confused, I researched further and discovered this specific image of Godzilla. It turns out this image is public domain, not the movie. And this is because of an error from 1970 that caused it to expire and then never be renewed. So to sum it up, no, Godzilla, the character or the movie, neither are public domain. They are still copyrighted, even in the US. Toho's legal team rivals that of Nintendo. And if you want proof, just look at Godzilla Heritage. It's a fan film from 2020 that was funded through Kickstarter. The filmmakers published two trailers for the film and were immediately contacted by Toho's lawyers. It's kind of funny because Dr. Skipper even states that Disney is the most bloodthirsty company when it comes to copyright, but I disagree. So they didn't renew and manipulate the copyright system like a certain company that does with all their beloved IPs. What, Disney? Disney? Breaking news, Mickey Mouse is now public domain. Oh wait, never mind, just Steamboat Willie. Not, not even that. The name is still claimed by Disney, so the only legal way to name it is Boat Rat Drives Boat. Sure, they did issue a copyright claim on Star Wars Theory's Darth Vader fan film, but at least they allowed it to stay on YouTube. Toho didn't even do that with Godzilla Heritage, or should I say, Heritage, because the filmmakers were forced to change the name of the film to just Heritage, and the film was only allowed to be released on Kickstarter, not YouTube. That way, only the people that backed the film could watch it, no one else. Fast forwarding a bit, Dr. Skipper outright states that he does not like Godzilla because of what he calls the Jurassic Park effect, where the first film is really good, but the rest suck ass. His words, not mine. Also, there's a big thing I need to address in this video. I kind of hate Godzilla, if we're going to be honest. Get the f down, man. <laughs> to make this really easy for you to understand, Godzilla has what I like to call the Jurassic Park effect. Jurassic Park is a great movie that has cool dinosaurs and sexy Jeff Goldblum, but the film still has heavy messaging. But Jurassic Park, yeah, the IP is now just CGI wars with Chris Pratt. They have like no cultural impact at all. This is what happened with Godzilla. I don't have any nostalgia for the old Godzilla movies. Yeah, I still watched them a bit when I was a kid. The fuck? And even rewatched them recently when I got the idea for this video. So no bias. 98% of them suck ass. Now, I get it. There are some stinkers in the franchise, and this is his subjective opinion. However, it feels wrong to say 2% of these movies are worth watching. I know he's being a bit hyperbolic, but the math shows that doesn't even count for one movie. For every Godzilla's Revenge, we have Shin Godzilla. For every Ebera Horror of the Deep, we have GMK Giant Monsters All Out Attack. Again, I know that this is his subjective opinion, but it just feels weird to make a video on a film series that he doesn't like or understand and yet act as an authoritative voice. It would be like if I made a video about why Matt Smith is the only good Doctor Who and the rest suck, because I watched an episode back of that specific run in 2018 when I had strep throat. That does not make me a figure of authority. I wanna skip forward a little bit and not go over every single inaccuracy, 
like saying Bernie spilled water on Mechagodzilla's circuit board when it was actually liquor. And Alfred from Atlanta spilling water on a computer to fry Mechagodzilla's motherboard. They may sound like a nitpick on my part, but in Godzilla vs. Kong, it's a running gag and is mentioned countless times that Bernie carries around a flask of liquor. In fact, the scene he literally pulled that clip from in his own video has Bernie saying, I gotta die here with you and sober. Hey, what are you? That's the solution? I gotta die here with you and sober! Again, I know it's a minor nitpick, but he says it numerous times in the video, and it goes to show the lack of research or understanding of what he's actually talking about. They got defeated because water was spilt on the computer. Later on, Dr. Skipper states in the video that Godzilla Minus One is a breath of fresh air compared to every other film being awful. It proves that Godzilla does not work in the US because of how Japan-centric the King of the Monsters really is. And he compares Minus One to the original 1954 film in both tone and quality. This is something I would actually agree on, somewhat. In my opinion, Minus One is the best Godzilla film ever made. I saw it five times in theaters. However, it's wrong to call it a breath of fresh air when Shin Godzilla was released back in 2016. Oddly enough, Dr. Skipper doesn't even mention Shin in this video, and he actually shows clips of it when he's talking about Minus One. So to watch a Godzilla movie with compelling human characters, nuanced discussion with critiques on the Japanese government, while having havoc and consequences that feel impactful, while also having an antagonist that is menacing, threatening, and terrifying, all done with $15 million? Shin Godzilla is much more in line with the 1954 film than Minus One. And if I'm being completely honest, I think there's more exploration of the nuclear weaponry themes that are present in the original, as in Shin, the entire climax of the film is about stopping Godzilla before the US drops a third nuke on Japan. We really only see the nuke go off in Minus One, and that's about it. We don't really see much else from it. It doesn't really have overarching themes. We never really get the idea that it's going to happen again. Whereas in Shin Godzilla, it's expanded upon in greater depth. However, he never mentions Shin Godzilla in his video. And if I had to guess why, it's because he didn't watch it. Dr. Skipper also implies that Godzilla was never a hero and that he was made a hero by the US. And this was something that was never done before in the past. Oddly enough, he does this while showing clips of Godzilla being a hero in Japanese films from the 70s earlier on in the video. Again, this is a fundamental misunderstanding of the character. Godzilla is not Gamera, right? He's not a kid's superhero or a defender of children, and he certainly isn't a patriotic figure in the MonsterVerse. Godzilla restores balance to nature. That is something that is stated constantly in the MonsterVerse films. He's not afraid to lay waste to American soil, as shown in Godzilla vs. Kong, because they overstepped their boundaries in trying to build a Mechagodzilla in Pensacola. Of course, that was a company, not America, but you get what I'm saying. Dr. Skipper even shows shots of Godzilla with American battleships in 2014, and this is wildly out of context. Sure, he's not outright destroying these ships, but that doesn't mean he is their ally. The US military is actively following Godzilla and keeping watch of him because of everything that had been going down with the Mudos in that film. Not to mention, Godzilla is listed as a threat to national security at the start of 2019's King of the Monsters. There's an entire Senate hearing at the start of the movie that is centered around him being a potential threat to not only America, but the world. Dr. Skipper also goes on this really weird tangent about the Mudos representing Japan and Godzilla representing America, and that's in the 2014 film. The entire thing feels very half-baked. Godzilla emerges in the film not as a destroyer, but as a force of balance. He's a guardian of Earth. He's restoring equilibrium in the face of cataclysmic threats. His portrayal reflects a universal archetype of a protector, transcending national boundaries to embody the primal forces of nature. Remember, Godzilla is shown in not just America, but in several countries throughout the MonsterVerse. He isn't just in America the entire time. The Mudos, on the other hand, are shown to represent humanity's unintended consequences and the dangers of nuclear energy. They literally eat nukes. While their emergence in the film's narrative is triggered by human activities, their threat extends far beyond the borders of Japan. They represent Japan as much as an earthquake or a tsunami represents Japan. Now, the main thesis of his video is that America is incapable of adapting Godzilla, and that the monster does not work here. I'm going to have to disagree. 
I think comparing minus one to the monster verse is like comparing apples to oranges. Minus one is a callback to the original 1954 film, while the monster verse is more in line with the Showa era. It starts out serious and grounded, but gradually gets more and more insane as it continues on. And that's okay. Godzilla is probably the most versatile character in fiction, besides maybe Alfred E. Newman. In its original context, Godzilla symbolized the horrors of nuclear weapons and the lingering fear of radiation following World War II. Over time, though, Godzilla started to represent other things, like environmental themes. Look at films like Godzilla vs. Hedorah, where he's basically Captain Planet. This new theme serves as a cautionary tale about humanity's impact on the planet and the consequences of unchecked industrialization. Beyond that, though, Godzilla has appeared in a wide array of genres, ranging from sci-fi and horror to comedy and even animation. The versatility allows storytellers to explore different themes and narratives while retaining the core essence of the character. Godzilla has undergone significant character development over the years, and that ranges from being a destructive force of nature to a defender of Earth. And this evolution adds a lot of depth to the character and allows for nuanced storytelling. He can be Superman, like Dr. Skipper complains about in his video, or he can be a demon that specifically targets humans and tries to wipe them out, like in GMK or Minus One. He can be whatever the filmmaker wants him to be. And if you want a source on that, my source is Toho. They have reintroduced him so many times as so many different things. Not to mention Godzilla's ability to reflect societal anxieties and concerns makes him relevant across different cultures and time periods, ensuring that his popularity endures as well as having a strong presence in pop culture. I mean, can you imagine how boring it would be if in every single movie he was in, all 38 of them, he did nothing but represent nuclear warfare? That would be the most boring thing in the world. It would get tiring after the first, like, five instances, which it did. That's why they changed it up after the second film, and he started to represent things beyond that. Ironically enough, Dr. Skipper talks about how Godzilla 1954 is super serious, and he rips on the goofier films like King Kong vs. Godzilla and Terror of Mechagodzilla. Ironically enough, the director of Godzilla 1954, Ishiro Honda, also directed King Kong vs. Godzilla and Terror of Mechagodzilla. Those films that you say are too goofy were directed by the same guy that made Godzilla 1954. Ishiro Honda understood Godzilla more than any other director, and he understood the power of that character lies in its versatility. You can realistically stamp any message on Godzilla and it would work, because it's a giant monster that tramples buildings. He could represent the Cold War, he could represent climate change, he could represent pretty much anything you want. And look, I don't want anyone watching this video and then going and harassing Dr. Skipper. I'm not even mad at the guy. I just want him to do more research and to have a better grasp of what he's actually talking about in his videos. I'm not saying he has to cite every single thing he says. What I am saying is he just has to have stuff to back it up. And if you're watching this doc, I just want you to know that I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed.